Hello and welcome to Building a Generation on City Schools TV, where we highlight all the amazing things our students, teachers, school leaders, and communities are doing in Baltimore City Public Schools. I'm Bryce Taylor. And I'm Tia Bryant from the City Schools Student Media Team. Thanks for joining us on our mission in Building a Generation. In this episode, we celebrate the grand openings of three new 21st century schools, including Baybrook Elementary and Middle School, which is where we make our visit. Then, an exciting event connecting soon-to-be graduate students to career opportunities. At the Baltimore Design School, a big community event goes down for Black History Month, celebrating what black love means. In this episode, we launch a brand new series called CT Explain, where we explore career and technology pathways. To kick it all off, we meet carpentry students at Carver Vocational Technical High School and agricultural students at Green Street Academy. It's great to see what our students are experiencing up close. I can't wait to see the new segment, but what I'm really excited for is the 21st Century Schools event, where we celebrate the 14 schools that have opened and many more to come all working towards building a generation. That sounds so cool, especially because our first segment is from the grand opening of Baybrook, a new 21st century school. And you were there for all the festivities and a tour of the new school, so let's check it out. Hey, it's Bryce Taylor with the City School Student Media Team, and today we are celebrating the grand opening of three 21st century buildings, John Rurock, Calvin M. Rodwell, and right now we're at Baybrook Elementary Middle School. Let's get this party started. signify the kind of spaces and expectations we have for all young people in the city of Baltimore. All right, I'm here with Principal Reese. Principal Reese, can you tell me, how does it feel to have a brand new building? I'm so excited to have a brand new building. Our school began with three different buildings um, when I first started here four years ago. And now we have this amazing 21st century building where all of our scholars could be underneath from one roof and get the latest 21st century technology. This is awesome. Hello. This is oh. nice. Oh, here we, we got the art room. Let's go check this out. All righty. I like this. First of all, first of all, look at that view. Look at all the light that's coming in here. That's what I'm talking about. When you have open windows, it makes the kids super happy. You can tell there's some future artists going to be created in this room. They're going to be inspired to create art. And I'm so excited to be able to introduce the children to something new and something better. And I pray that it will give them the ability to be more creative. You know, when we teach them in a building like this, in a new environment, it's giving the community an opportunity to see how great our kids are. Check me out on this sweet podium right now. We're in the theater room. Theater for elementary, middle, that's dope. I'm getting their Shakespeare on, to be or not to be. A lot of other things that they're offering for us, like theater, drama, there's so much more offering to them, to prepare them for the world that they got to go out into. You know, I feel like they can go and they can learn. I feel like this should have been the standard, and so hopefully going forward, this is the standard for, for school, our school system here in Baltimore. Me and my friends, we finally get to learn in a brand new environment. We have bigger hallways and we have more we have more classrooms than we had before. And now we're in the typical classroom. But even still, it's still 21st century. New desks, new chairs, new projector, new whiteboard. This place is dope. And right over here, you have something called a chill zone. A place where our students, if anything becomes overwhelming or if you just need a break, Come over here, you sit in the bing bag chair, and you chill out. I love Big Joe's, these are great. Just chilling. I already feel relaxed. This is what we need for our young generation. Look at this. Look at all this, first of all, one, two, three, four, five, six hooks. You know, I'm not jealous, but when I was in elementary school, the, the lockers were not this generous. These kids, these kids got it made. It's not a 21st century school visit if we don't check out the gym. The ball might be imaginary, but the fun is real. We are bringing back our after school programming. So definitely sports, um, clubs. We're gonna have an art club for that amazing art room. So during the presentation, this is the room that Principal Reese was talking about, the Bay Center. We have a classroom, we have a laundry room, pantry and offices all for the community this is what the future looks like community interaction check this out check this out washer and dryer that's too dope 
That is way too dope. This is amazing. In that space, we're going to have after school programming. Um, we're going to use that space to have activities for our parents, so have, build parent partnership. And we're also going to do things to support student wholeness, so having mental health providers and social workers in that space. We are very proud that today Baltimore City has invested in our futures. Thank you. What an incredible tour of the Baybrook Elementary and Middle School. You can tell students are going to flourish here. But here's the thing. Today marks the day that 14 21st century schools have been opened. And not to mention, there are 14 more on the way. It is an incredible time to be a part of the Baltimore City Public Schools family, especially if you're a student. This has been Bryce Taylor with the City Schools Student Media Team. See you next time. Wow, that school looks like it's from the future. I can't wait to see more schools like that in the city. Did you see how many hooks the lockers have? That's a lot of room. Wow, I'm glad you caught the most important part of the video. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the community at Baybrook is so excited to be in their new school. Wider windows, well-lit hallways, and amazing outdoor space will help students thrive. And speaking of thriving, a career fair at the Reengagement Center exposed students to jobs and new learning opportunities. Let's go to Nina Marklin for the story. Take it away, Nina. Hi, my name is Nina Markland. Today I'm here at the Reengagement Center for the Career Development Fair, where students are provided exposure to future career pathways and opportunities. Let's go check it out. What we try to do is help students get reengaged into school and then provide them with supports around the many barriers that may have kept them out of school. What we're really doing is trying to build a network of free training programs and um, get the word out to current seniors and people who have graduated in the last couple years just to let them know that there are these really great opportunities out there that are totally free and that they're really easy to sign up for. Hey, there's a lot of different things, a, different, a lot of different opportunities for the younger for the younger people and the youth to get out out the streets more and start making better ways with their lives. It's important for students because it educates us, you know, without these opportunities and stuff. Some people might be out there feeling lost. They don't know what to do with their soul. Like and this is the perfect opportunity to at least you know, get acknowledged if you confused on something. We offer, um, like I said, a number of different technical programs. Um, certified nursing assistant and um, patient care tech are one of the more popular ones. You don't have to take a long time to earn that. It only is about six months versus actually going to school for two years or four at that matter. So finding people that you trust, that you can network with, going to events like this to have different resources and mentors, and for all my adults, all my, my people, even if you're not an adult, but if you're successful and you're doing good things, people who are suffering in silence need you, so we got to be there for them too. Y'all got to look for us, but we got to be present. We got to be looking for them so we can help build each other. Helps me strive to move forward and want to move forward knowing that I got support, you know. So I'm just getting as many opportunities as I can before I'm left with nothing. You know, I'm like trying to get ahead of the game. Everybody just reaches out, wrap their hands around students and uh, work with them. And we also, we check in on them in school as well. So we don't just put them in school. They actually, they're going to see us weekly just to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. So. Is there any advice that you would give to people a little bit younger than you who are afraid or who need help and don't know how to ask? I would say try, just try, always try, never give up. Just do what you need to do to be the best you can be. Just don't never give up. Just keep fighting. Just keep pushing. Everything's going to fall in place. Over like the last couple of months, like I lost all hope in school all together. But this job fair, it, uh, it opened my eyes up to like a lot of like different stuff. Today, I hopefully, after they meet with the different partners, the different resources here, and then we do some follow-up, they can really solidify their plan, post-secondary plan, to have a clear, crystal clear uh, plan to what they want to do next. We're going to get it. We're going to get this money. We're going to get these jobs. We're going to be successful. We're going to get these bachelors, these doctorates, masters before the doctorates. We're going to get it. Let's go! It's so great to see all the vendors here and all the students engaging. And in all honesty, just excited about the career fair. This is Nina Markland with City Schools TV. See ya! Fairs like this is a perfect way to let students know the many career opportunities they have, even if they had a hard time in high school. This fair did not just simply re-engage students, but it gave them hope as well. All right, so for our next story, it takes place at Baltimore Design School, where students will be performing for Black Love and Literacy Night. 
This event is a way to contribute to Black History Month while giving students a platform that allows them to express themselves. And if I am correct, you were the one at this event. Yes, I was. So without further ado, take it away, Tia. Hey guys, this is Tia Bryant for City Schools TV. I'm here currently at Baltimore Design School covering an event called Black Love and Literacy Night. Here, students will be presenting their creations they made for Black History Month. There will be art, poetry, writing, and much more, so let's go get started. Love yourself. Shine bright. Your voice is a resurgence of our abducted ancestry. It's a community event. This is literacy, this is art, this is fashion, this is black love. And so why not celebrate it together while we can? My culture is like something that's very important to me. It's good to hear other people's voices or to hear other students' voices, especially because of like such a broad topic like black love. Black love means being different. It means being open, being unique. Understanding who you are on a deep level. Just loving your skin color and love loving who you are for yourself. Who we are as a nation, who we are as a people. I think about the struggles. One, her diversity. Two, just to make sure that they own who they are. Because of our history in America, a lot of our students lack identity. And so for them to be in a space where they're being celebrated and their skin is being celebrated, I mean, who they are in the different shades are being celebrated, I think it's super dope. So what can we expect to see as far as the fashion event? You can expect to see highlighted, logoed, friendly, um, designed eyewear. His imperfections were as angelic like his smile. They came up with the idea. We went through, we researched and brainstormed different phrases from different people that are important to the black community. It's a big way to represent our culture and how we express ourselves. Because I think that it's very important for the students to learn about black love and also learn about the importance of literacy and adding it into the curriculum of black love. Students are going to do a poetry show. They're going to recite poems that, they, that they've written for the Black Love and Literacy Night. And I think that the students did worked really hard on it. I wanted to make a piece that um, symbolizes what type of words um, love means to people, understand what black love is and what our culture is like. You know, people just gathered around having conversation. It's really nice to have something that's like mixing worlds together just to show how powerful black love could be. Black love isn't love just for black people. Black love is the love for your culture, it's the love for your race, and the love for your roots. That was an amazing event. It's fascinating to see students and staff collaborate as they share their creative projects. Baltimore breeds creative people, so it's important to attend events like these to celebrate students' potential as up-and-coming artists. This has been Tia Bryant for City Schools TV. Be sure to keep up with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. See you guys next time. Seeing all those students show their talents and speak on the importance of Black History Month was a great event for the whole community. City schools are a brilliant pot for its students with lots of potential and talent. But now it's time for our first break of the show. But when we return, we'll be talking about our new series called CT Explained. All right here on Building a Generation. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Building a Generation, our show for bringing together the best that's happening across Baltimore City Public Schools. And we mean it. Now let's jump right into our next video at Carver Vocational Technical High School. Whoa, slow down. You forgot the most important thing about this video. I didn't forget, but do you mind reminding me again? The Carpentry video is about our new series called CT Explained, where we dive deep into different CT programs and get a real feel for what it's like. This video is about the Carpentry program at Carver. Let's watch as I get the first hand experience. Well, take it away. Hey, it's Bryce Taylor with the City Schools student media team, and this is the premiere episode of our brand new series, CTE Explained. In this series, we will dive deep into different CTE programs, talk to students, and get a real feel for what it's like. But get this, each episode will feature a demonstration by the students showcasing their CTE pathway skills. How does that sound? Cool? Well, today's episode is carpentry. Let's get cutting. So I'm here with Jerron. He's been a part of the carpentry program for two years now. So Jerron, what are we doing today? So basically we're turning logs into benches. All right. So, so what's first the first step? step? First step over here, we're going to chainsaw this side to even out the middle of okay. the log. So 
All right, so tell me, why do you start with the end piece first? You want to get off the bed first. That piece of wood was bad, okay. so you had to shave it down to it, though. You get to the good wood, because that wood is no good no more. What happens if you put like a piece of bad wood into a piece of furniture? I mean, it could break very easy. All right, we don't want that to happen. So what's the next step to the bench? So after we chainsaw, we go over here and we basically split these chisels and we use the sledgehammer to bang it inside to split it in half. All right. Let's, uh, let's split it in half. Let's get to it. So what's the next step? Next step, we are gonna pull the bark off because we were sanding. So okay. if there's any extra left bark, we're gonna use the, the tools to get the bark off. And this is what it actually looked like once you're done using a 40 grit, 100 grit, 220 grit, make it real smooth. That's really smooth. Yeah. I like that, all right. Well, let's take that bark off. So we're taking the bark off here. Yeah. So what's the tool that we're using? A chisel and a spoke shave. And a spoke shave. And, okay. and a quick grip. And, they and then you need a hammer or a hatchet. You can use plenty of tools that to get the bark off. What's that? Uh, a spoke, spoke shave. shave. Okay, how do you use that? You gotta put it away. You put it and then it skims across the top to get that bark. So you get the good wood. The good wood is the light part that you start to see coming up. So you keep doing this, and once you get off the bark off, you go and sand it. So what are they about to do over here? First, we very flat. We very use this. It's rough right now, but we can flatten it. What's this machine called? A router. OK. And it just flattens the piece that we just split in half. Flatten this piece, and then we flip it, and then we take it over here. To be honest, I think this is like amazing. That Just to see that that was just one dull old log, and now they're turning it into a bench. This is some serious stuff that these carpentry programs and students are doing. I think it's really interesting. Thank you, John. Thank you so much for showing me around the shop today. I feel like I know a lot of, I, I want to make my own bench at this point. I feel like I learned a lot. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So this is the finished product. Now the legs, they are eventually going to get chiseled out. There's going to be a little wood burning, a little designs on the legs, but this is essentially what we get. A nice handmade bench by our very own CTE students. And not to mention, this bench is going to sell for hundreds of dollars. We're doing big things here at Carver and all Baltimore City schools around. And when you finish the program, you finish with not only a high school diploma, but a certificate in carpentry. This brings us to an end of our premiere episode of CTE Explained. I'd like to thank the Carver Carpentry Program for hosting us. This has been Bryce Taylor with the City School Student Media Team. See you at the next Pathway. Bob the Builder might as well quit. The students of the carpentry program are taking over. And I wonder if they could fix some things around my house. They probably can. Those students have some serious skill. Now let's head over to our next video at Green Street Academy. This is another CTE Explained, but this one is all about the agriculture program, which has chickens and fish. Sounds cool, right? And our very own Tia Bryant from the student media team is going to do that as well. Take it away. Hey, it's Tia Bryant, and welcome to CTE Explained on City Schools TV. In this series, we dive deep into different CTE programs, talk with students, and get a real feel for what it's like. In this episode, it's all about the agriculture program at Green Street Academy. From farming tilapia, raising their own plants, and making breakfast sandwiches with eggs they get from chickens that they raise, it's all going down here. So let's go check it out. All right, so joining me here today is Chris and Chris, two of the top students of the agriculture program. So tell us a little bit about where we are right now. This is one of the agriculture classroom where we normally do projects, labs, and research on FFA, or animal livestock and other lessons. In this class, we learn how to sustain plant life without certain uh, materials like soil and without direct sunlight. So is this the only part of the classroom? No, the no. other part is the kitchen across the hall. And what goes on in there? In the, every Friday, we make breakfast sandwiches and we use the eggs from outside from our chickens. 
Let's go check it out. Hey guys, so we're currently one of the kitchens at Green Street Academy where the juniors and seniors are making breakfast sandwiches with eggs they got from the chickens. Thank you. This is an all egg sandwich especially made for me because I don't eat meat. It tastes a lot different compared to other sandwiches because the eggs are actually fresh here. So tell me a little bit about what goes on Tilapia Farm. With the setup here, it recycles itself using the same water. It's just pumping through 24-7 over and over refilling itself. So how do you maintain the waters in the fish tank? So we use pH strips mm -hmm. and other chemicals to make sure the water stays in seven. We would put them in the tube and go over here on the counter and test them and just find the results if they're good or not. We mostly use high range pH or nitrate sometimes inside of it. Mm -hmm. And on the bottles we'll say how much we add in it and we'll put the pH strip inside the tube with the water and the chemicals together to see how high or low it is. Well, right now, it's all good, the water's good. Don't have to take them out and refill them or anything. So what are we doing right now? So we're gonna catch one of the yellowtail tilapia fish okay. to show you what they look like. This is the yellowtail tilapia. What do you use to feed them? Um, right here in this bin, we have different types of food that we'll use on them. Once all of them are fully grown, we have yeah, fish fry, we sell some of them to the mm -hmm. community to eat. So with an agriculture, there's a lot of entrepreneurial activities going on too. We make our own sauces and stuff and we sell them. So do you see yourself working with agriculture as a career in your future? Yes, ma'am. I plan on going to Penn State for biotechnology. Okay. And what about you, Chris? And I do want to attend the Penn State, only because, not only because the agriculture programs they offer, but also because the engineering and technology they also offer. All right, guys, so thanks for showing me down here. So where are we headed to next? We're going to go ahead into one of the courtyards that the school has where we have, like, another greenhouse where we're growing plants just in water. Right now, there's tomatoes in there. So All check right, it out. Let's go check it out. So tell me a little bit about what goes on in here. In here, we grow tomatoes, and we use the, the tank to, uh, to make us a water cycle. And it just goes from bucket to bucket to bucket keeping the plants hydrated. And inside of the bucket is a fish that keeps the water flowing and then we use the fish poop to help grow the plants. And the panels provide sunlight for the... Yeah, so it provides, like it traps the heat in mm -hmm. that it needs because you can't, if it doesn't trap the heat in, it'll stay cold and don't really, it's not good for the tomato plant to grow in. All right guys, so where are we headed to next? We're gonna go head out back to the school where we have the bigger greenhouse and more of the chickens where we use the eggs for sandwiches. All right, let's go check it out. So now we're at the chicken coop, so yep. tell me a little bit about it. This is some of the chickens we actually bought some, raised from little ones to big ones. Right. So how do you take care of the chickens? So we take care of the chickens by every, I think every month we get a very large bag of chicken food and we bring the holes for their water. Mm -hmm. But to keep them safe from outside stuff like hawks and foxes, we keep them inside of the chicken coop and mm -hmm. the gates. All right, so now let's look for some eggs. All right, over here. Well, so right here, this is where the chickens come and lay their eggs when they're ready. Mm -hmm. But it's cold, so they're not ready yet. <laughs> you wanna hold them? So when they're warm, that's how you know that they're ready? Yes, when they're warm, that's the best time for them to lay eggs. Okay. So what's so fun about this part of the agriculture program? I would say my favorite because we're hands-on out here and we mm -hmm. learn new stuff about the sustainability of animals and we learn like how to keep them safe and stuff. So what piqued your interest in animals? Um, well, when I was younger, I, had, I, I used to have a bunch of animals, like I would mm -hmm. feed the outside animals and my, my mom hated it, but now since I did that, I've grown a love for them and this is my best part of my day every day. Chris, are you interested in animals too? A little bit. I'm not big of a touching the chickens fan or picking them up, but in different type of animals, I'm more interested in. We saw lots today, guys. We saw you make breakfast sandwiches, the food computers, tilapia farm, the greenhouse, the chicken coop, and the duck pen. It's all been fun. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming and letting us show you what we do here at GSB. And thank you for letting us to show you the experience we have and share it with you. Thank you guys so much. That was an amazing tour of the incredible agriculture program at my school, Green Street Academy. Thanks again to Chris and Chris for giving me the tour and showing me all the ins and outs. You can watch additional episodes of CT Explain on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. 
This is Mentia Bryant on City Schools TV. See you in the next Pathway. That's so cool how they use eggs and the chickens they have to make the sandwiches, and they tasted really good too. You see that one student that got chased by a duck, though? <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. That was pretty funny. But did you look at the time? Wait, is it that time already? Yep, it's time for the question, question of, of the, the show. show. What's the question today, to you? Okay, so what type of fish does Green Street Academy raise? Is it A, goldfish, B, salmon, C, tilapia, or D, sardines? The correct answer is coming up right after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now it's time to answer the question of the show. Was it A, goldfish, B, salmon, C, tilapia, or D, sardines? The correct answer is C, tilapia. They keep the fish in the basement of their school and are constantly checking the pH to make sure the water is right. Now we're headed to Forest Park High School where students and families are celebrating the 21st Century School Buildings Program with City School CEO Dr. Santa Lisa's and other district leaders. And once again, I'm pretty sure you were there and you were able to interview staff and students. So let's hear what they have to say. Hey guys, this is Tierra Bryant reporting for City Schools TV. Tonight we celebrate the 21st Century School Buildings Program that has already seen 14 schools open so far with more to come in the future. There will be information sessions, interactive displays, and opportunities to hear from guest speakers. It's all happening here, so let's get started. Hey guys, so I'm currently at the auditorium of the 21st Century School Buildings Program where district leaders and guest speakers will be reflecting on the past of 21st Century Schools and talking about the future. Let's go check it out. Being a school leader of the 21st Century School is definitely something that I am happy to uh, share and know that the work is twofold. It's not just about education for students, but it is ongoing education for the adults to make sure that they are comfortable with the work that we have ahead. So I'm here at the first breakout session where they're going to be focusing on high schools and proposing new ideas on how to modernize them. Why is it so important to find funding for these schools? Um, our, we have some of the oldest schools in the state of Maryland and we know that the school buildings in many cases hinder our students from being able to learn as well as they can. Alright guys, so I'm here with Julia. So tell me Julia, what does a 21st century school building compare to other schools? It definitely has more opportunities than other schools. It has courses that you can use to your opportunity and get better learning for yourself and so you can achieve. The next breakout session called Design to Deliver, well they'll be discussing the difference between 21st century schools. Let's hear what they have to say. Many of the buildings are um, designed in a way that they're actually cutting edge. So Baltimore is actually, by doing this, is, is leading the pack, if you will. And how do you think the new environments impact the students? Well, it just really allows them to, one, know that we care about them, and um, two, to really not have barriers in terms of physical barriers. It's also a very welcoming space. Uh, many times when we do tours with students, the first thing they'll say is, one, I can see out the windows, and two, I can drink the water in my building. It is wonderful to hear and see uh, continued support in a positive manner about uh, environments and learning environments, wanted for students and wanted for children uh, so that they have better opportunities for tomorrow's and the 21st century careers. That was such an informative event. Seeing all the district leaders and guest speakers talk about future plans for 21st century schools were truly fascinating. Be sure to keep up with future projects happening in our city. This has been Tia Brown for City Schools TV. See you guys next time. Schools like this are definitely a necessity to improve student education. And it doesn't only affect the students, but the staff as well. It teaches them creative ways to teach the class. You got that right. Well, unfortunately, that brings us to the end of this episode of Building a Generation. Well, I guess that's okay since we showed so many amazing videos. But we'll see you all next time. So thank you for joining us and sharing the wonderful stories of our school community. Be sure to keep watching City Schools TV. And for more, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. We are everywhere. I'm Tia Bryant. And I'm Bryce Taylor. Thank, thank you, you for, for building, building a generation. generation. See, see ya. ya.